Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to whichever Pinkin channel this finds you on, kind of south or joined by Dave Freezer. We're going to be talking and, and sort of looking at some of the threads in the transfer window in the opening week, and it feels like it's been a hell of a lot longer than that. Um, this is uh, Window Watch. We'll try and do this maybe weekly or, or as often as, as we need to in terms of stuff that happens. Obviously, we're kind of dictated to by if anything actually happens in, in the market or if there's any speculation to speak about. Um, if you've got any comments, questions, whatever, um, do get them in via the, uh, the the comment box, which is underneath wherever you're watching this. Um, Dave, let's, uh, let's kick off this by speaking about someone that I feel is going to be fairly prominent in these videos and the stuff we write over over the next uh, sort of few weeks or so. Emmy Buendia, there's been a lot of um, stuff written already. From, from your perspective and maybe from our perspective, how much of it do you actually feel is is accurate at this stage? Um, well, I think there is a degree of accuracy to it in, in terms of the, if you look at the journalists who are sort of close to Arsenal, your, your likes of John Cross and David Ornstein, um, they have said before and have said since that it's a sort of a long held interest that Arsenal had. And uh, I've seen a couple of the stories that said that the scouts under Unai Emery had been impressed with Buendia and, and thought that Arsenal should have been looking at him then when they probably could have got him for a bit less. But I mean, I, I think the reports right from the start were, were never anything to be sort of panicking about, were there? And, and, and you know, the stuff that happens publicly obviously is, is very different to what goes on behind the scenes and what Stuart Webber knows is happening and things like that anyway. So um, I, I don't think it's ever progressed to the point where it, it, we need to start sort of uh, worrying about it too much but of course he's the star name isn't he he's the guy he was he's the reigning player of the month um he was just been you know this morning nominated for championship player of the month he is sort of the man of the moment isn't he and and that all that stuff that we talked about in the summer about hoping that he could become the best player in the championship well if you go by the who scored ratings uh, for the division he is now top of the pile so he is arguably the best player in the championship which is what norwich fans had hoped and believed could happen um, so yeah, inevitably links are going are to come. How, how much do you think the experience that he had in the summer and maybe had his head turned a little bit by some of the speculation, of course, was left out of it against Bournemouth quite, quite famously at, at this point. How much do you think that's kind of stood him in good stead for this window and all the noise that there's been so far? Because obviously we can't speak for him, Buendia, but certainly looking from the outside as we do, he looks to be someone who's really enjoying his football at the moment at, at Norwich City. Yeah, well, he's 24 now, as he turned 24 on Christmas Day. Um, so, uh, you know, he's got kids. I think he's got second on the way, isn't he? And, um, you know, he has spoken a little bit. I think, was it yourself that spoke to him after one of the games when he spoke a bit about, um, you know, now that he was a father, he sort of feels a bit more like a father figure to, to some of the younger players in the squad. We've seen how he uh, interacts around Josh Martin, who's probably a player he can relate to a little bit, isn't he? So, um yeah, I, I think it, that's just sort of a natural maturity. You know, he, he's still obviously on the pitch uh, during games. I, I do get infuriated with his behaviour at times, the way he chucks his arms around and uh, around and sort of lets out the frustrated screams and things like that. But I don't think that's ever going to go. That That is just part of his character. But as long as he balances it out with the brilliant moments like we saw on Saturday, you can kind of forgive that. But yeah, I, I think him and Campwell... Um, but they probably looked at how Max Aaron's dealt with it all. And, and there was maybe a little bit of um, oh, perhaps we should have handled it a bit more like that. Um, it didn't in the end, it got to the point where it ne necessarily didn't really help their public persona. So um, as Todd put it after the Cardiff game, when I spoke to him recently after that, that brilliant goal, he realised that now the only thing that matters is football. You just got to concentrate on the football, make sure you're doing the business on the pitch and all that off field stuff doesn't matter does it because if you're playing well enough and you earn a 30 million pound move or whatever to to one of the big boys then in m most cases Norwich fans are going to wish those players well because they'll, they'll have earned it but um yeah that, I'd say that it, the, the signs are there that Emmy has has matured to a certain extent yeah so just to to cap off this Emmy discussion as as we understand um of course as as there would be for any big club in Emmy Buendia it's been watched maybe on a list somewhere, probably not one that, that we're massively expecting to shift on, um, particularly given maybe this isn't going to be a window where those clubs are going to have cash to spend, uh, given the, the coronavirus situation. Maybe the summer is is more viable as as being one, um, a red flag, I guess, to, to Norwich fans and, and, and Emmy Buendia's future. Um, uh, and one outgoing we have seen, Carlton Morris has, has gone to Barnsley. That all got confirmed last night. Um, 
I'd say that's a fairly decent move for him, really, considering he he spent the first half of the season in in League One, Barnsley as well, who obviously we saw on Saturday. And I know certainly us guys were were very impressed with. Yeah, definitely. The the organisation and and energy, considering they were missing four players due to COVID as well. So I think that's a really good move for him. And we saw Corley Woodrow is their first choice striker, isn't he? So um, he he doesn't, it's probably unlikely he's going to go in and get straight in the team. He's going to have to be their sort of uh, competition up front, I would have thought. But he was playing in, in League One. Russell Martin had said he'd been outstanding in the in the last few games and it appeared from afar that him and Cameron Jerome had struck up a, a decent strike partnership for them in League One. So, yeah, I, I think this is a good move for him. Obviously, he was out of contract in the summer anyway, so this allows him to get a move, doesn't it? Apparently, that's sort of low six figures, something like a quarter of a million, something along those sort of lines. And um, he is, you know, that, that gives him the security of a contract. I think it was 2023 20, plus the option of a further year at Barnsley. Um, and and he'll, he'll want to put down some roots because that was eight loan spells he had away from Norwich in the end, although he was at MK Dons and Rotherham twice. Uh, of course, he had that horrible injury with, with Shrewsbury and he only ever played one game for Norwich, which is which is sad, really, isn't it? And and it is sad to see that the FA Youth Cup team, you know, finally sort of come to an end. That's the last player to leave. But when you, when you look back at what they've got out of that under eighteen group, I think most uh, coaches would be happy if they they end up generating what was it, hundred and. 160 odd appearances, I think it was, and over 20 million pounds in transfer fees. So that's not bad. No, it certainly isn't. Do you think with with Carlton Morris, certainly in his mind, there'll be an element of what if after that Shrewsbury spell? We saw Ben Godfrey come come back and took a little bit of time, but eventually yeah. got into the side and, and kicked on. For him, it kind of looked like he was at a similar moment where he was maybe ready for that championship step up. Obviously got injured at Wembley, didn't he, in the playoff final, mm-hmm. and then that never really materialised. Do you think he'll reflect on it maybe as as what if at Norwich City? Yeah, I remember he was punching the wall was of the, of the um, tunnel at Wembley, wasn't he? Because he tried to play on initially, and yeah, that was that was a horrible bit of luck for him. And they lost that day as well, didn't they? Two Wembley defeats for him and Godfrey. But um, yeah, I think that's a good point because uh, uh, he he had had his first real, you know, his season with Hamilton was decent, but that was one where he literally he played like fifty three games or something that year, and he was a big part of of Shrewsbury's success under under Paul Hurst. And he looked like he was ready to at least um, come back and, and push to get involved in, in what was the title winning season in the end, wasn't it? That was when Rhodes was brought in and Pookie was brought in and things like that. So there was a, a, a slim chance he could force his way into to at least being in the squad that season. Um, but I, I remember I was at Colney for the game in the January against Leicester when he um, uh, that was his first game back from his knee injury. And then there was a really poor tackle from a Leicester defender, um, who I, I don't remember, one of their young young players. And they were out on the on the touchline, um, out wide, and he just ploughed into Morris and did his ankle. And then he was out for another th- three months or so, and, and, and he came back for a, a couple of under-23 games at the end of that season. So, yeah, it, that was really cruel luck, and that, then he's had to restart. But I think he's proven himself a League One player. Um, now he's got the opportunity to show that he's a championship player. And you look at Harry Toffolo, he's done it, hasn't he? You know, he went down to League Two, worked his way back up. Cameron Norman has, has you know, gone from non-league to, to Walsall in League Two. So that group, quite a few of them are playing either National League or higher. So the Youth Cup winners did, did pretty well. And, and I'm sure Norwich fans will want to see Morris get a career in the championship. Um and just hopefully maybe not against Norwich on the final day of the season at Oakwell. Um, let's hope he's not having some kind of decisive role in what happens to Norwich. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's going to be well up for that, isn't he? It's, it's also well worth <laughs> checking out, uh, you know, these clubs do the, the signing announcement videos. That is, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's quite something involving. I'm not sure if I, if I like it or if I don't, but it's, uh, it's very <laughs> strange. It's, uh, it's well worth a watch. So that's, uh, that's Carl Morris. I'm sure Norwich fans will, will wish him well. Um, uh, the other one in, in terms of solid news that we have is William Hondemark joining uh, Harrogate Town in, in League Two on loan. And on the surface, that seems a very good loan for a player that seems to have kicked on a little bit this season in the 23s. It does. Yeah. Harrogate, obviously, their first ever promotion to the Football League last year. They're, they're sort of mid-table. Just to, I think they're five points clear of the relegation zone with a couple of games in hand. So in a decent place. They they don't seem to have many household names in their squad. John Stead up front, who's you a know, veteran striker now. He used to play for Blackburn, Ipswich, Sheffield United. Um, they've got Kevin Loco, for instance, who was on the bench, I think, in the FA Youth Cup final for Norwich. 
I think he was around that age group. Um, centre back who's done well in non-league, and another one who's eventually got the step up to, to League Two. So, um, from the sounds of the quotes from Simon Weaver, their manager, he's really excited to to bring Honda Mark in, and and he's one who Norwich he has caught the eye of Norwich fans of, of what he did in the trophy this season for the under 23s Set up Tyrese on a toys goal at Plymouth. He also scored um, a goal there from sort of about 30 yards out, out on the wing. He sort of caught the keeper out of his goal, didn't he? Um, but he, as things stand, as far as we know, um, he's out of contract this summer. So um, this may well be goodbye. It may well be that he's had two years at the club and, and he's going to be moving on. Uh, we'll have to see. This might end up being a successful six months and he gets a new contract. There's 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 nothing certain at this point, but we, we know it's usually before Christmas when the academy lads are, are sort of told whether they'll be moving on or not in the summer, whether the club sees them as, as having a future. But the one thing you can say for, for Hondemark is he's got the build, isn't he? He's yeah. uh, a bit like a, an Akin Famawo, someone who, who's built like a man and, and ready for it. But um, he's now got to prove he's got the ability and um, and I guess the personality as well because Harrogate put out a video of their two new signings, their first day in training, that sort of stuff. And from those clips, he, he did look quite shy. He looked like he was, you know, taking in his surroundings with with the more experienced pros and listening to the manager. There was, there was a clip of, of Weaver actually chatting with him after the press conference and, and you could see it was very much... Um, he he was the uh, person listening in the conversation rather than uh, rather than doing the talking. So um, yeah, his first experience of a loan, and and again as ever, you, you just want him to to do well and then uh, see what follows from that. Yeah, hopefully he can get some good game time. I think as you said, the key there is his is his build, isn't it? Because unlike maybe a Dan Adshead who's had to go to to Holland to to play maybe a bit more technical football, he is someone that does look like he could cope with the demands of uh, of League Two. So that'll be interesting. Let's get into to some of your questions. We won't be able to answer all of them. We're trying to make this quite short and snappy, but we'll uh, we'll pick out some. We'll start with Craig Brown on Facebook, who said, "Any truth in the Lucas?" Um, Pearson transfer room, of course, the, the Chelsea winger who was linked yesterday, I think, wasn't he? An Italian report. Is this a player Norwich is seriously interested in? I think there were a, a few clubs mentioned, weren't there, Dave? Um, he, he does have championship experience, am I right in saying with Fulham? Um, it, it feels to me maybe that if you're an agent at the moment, given maybe the reputation Norwich City have in the game for recruitment and um, the positive body of work they've got. Emi Buendia, a good example of that. It would be silly not to link your player with a club like Norwich. You often see Norwich and Brentford get sort of clubbed together, don't you, in these sort of rumours. Is is that kind of how you view it or, or do you feel there is something more to this? Uh, I, at the moment, I'm not buying too much into it. A, because you've got Hernandez and Ida and, and Pojeta are all, well, certainly Hernandez and Pojeta might be involved on Saturday. Pojeta might even start. And then either towards the back end of the month, who we saw is capable of playing on the wing, hoping to be back before the end of the month. So a wide play doesn't really seem an option. It's a good point. I, I'd forgotten that he played for Fulham in, in the championship. But he, he looked quite decent that year, didn't he? That was the year that they won as well. Was it the, the year that they went up? Um, I'm, try I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but you know he's been at Chelsea a long time. Had a lot of um, a lot of loan clubs. He was at Reading as well in the Championship. It's it's one mainly because of where it's come from that I'm I'm not gonna read too much into it at this stage. If Emmy or Todd went, then yeah, you'd you'd think maybe that's a name that's on their list somewhere. But he. You know, there's a couple of countries where there's a lot of transfer speculation on there. Italy and Turkey are the two that, that spring to mind, really. There's a lot of transfer websites, a lot of transfer gossip. And we've seen that over the years with Norwich, haven't we? How many times did Norwich end up in the Italian transfer rumour mill, basically? Um, you know, going back to, uh, you know, the Hutton the days and um, Quagliarella and, and all those sort of ones. Even there was one that not that long ago, wasn't there, about Sammy Kadira? <laughs> Juventus. I mean, come on. I mean, Norwich aren't going to be able to afford his wages, are they? So it's all it's all part of the January fun and games. But th there is probably a chance that he's on the list at, at some point because he, he would all, he would seem to fit the the profile almost of, of one who could be a bit of a bargain if if it worked out. Um, but I did read an interview with him as well. Uh, he's at Rio Ave in Portugal, which is where Evo Evo Pinto plays now. Um, um, and it was him talking about how he really wants to put down roots now. He's sick of being out on loan and not knowing where he's going to be each summer. He wants to, you know, he wants a bit of um, consistency in his life. So um, if he is to cut short his time with, with them this month, then 
you know, maybe it's worth keeping an eye on. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's at Colney to, to having a medical or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not in Morrison's or anything yet. Is he? No. So that's, yeah. that's, that's the, the key watch. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up at somewhere like Derby, for example, wouldn't be particularly surprising um, this window if he, if, he, if he did decide to leave uh, Rio Ave. Um, Phil Afferton on YouTube has said, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, Phil. I think we're past the point of saying Happy New Year. But anyway, do you, do you <laughs> think there'll be any loan recalls or will the club just let them finish the course um obviously the main one i think is probably sebastian soto and whether they can get a work permit for him also wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see melvin city maybe come back and then loaned elsewhere because that's that that loan to belgium hasn't really worked out i don't think he's been in the match day squad yet um beyond that i don't think we're expecting too much in in, in terms of loan recalls are we dave no, although you say it's too early to stop saying Happy New Year. It's the 7th of January. I used to work with a guy when I worked at the local paper in Scunthorpe and it would be like April and he'd still be picking up the phone saying, Happy New Year to you. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, I mean, Sam McCallum's the uh, the one that a lot of Norwich fans had talked about. Uh, of course, won't be able to play for commentary in, in the Cup game on Saturday. But um, as things stand, unless the injuries take another turn for the worse or something else happens with Kintia, uh, we don't think he'll be coming back because they're happy that he's starting regularly in the Championship and they think that's good for his development at 20. Uh, the one that I did see this week is Rocky Bashiri as well. He's been playing uh, back in Belgium, but there's a, a couple of reports over there saying that uh, Norwich are going to recall him because he's kind of fallen out of the team there. Um, City is one that never quite got to the bottom of um, he, um, I think, had a hamstring injury because he was playing for them during um, pre-season and, and was playing for them regularly. But um, I'll just remind myself which <laughs> club that is. It's the same, Vassam Beveren. It's the same one that Sinani's at, isn't it? He was playing regularly in pre-season, but then got a hamstring injury and has never come back from it. Um, there was a, a piece this week uh, about the their training camp as they come back from their winter break. Um, and he has not been able to join up with it because of the COVID quarantine regulations, because he was outside of Belgium for more than 48 hours, basically gone back to France for Christmas. Now, if if he was part of their plans, um, you would have thought that they would have made sure that wasn't the case and that he was back in time to be in their training camp. So given he's one who actually made his debut for Norwich at Luton on the opening day of the season, that's um, and he's one that they gave a long contract to. They they paid a bit of money for, for last January, didn't they? He's one that they seem to have high hopes for, maybe even a long term successor to Alex Tetti as a defensive midfielder. I think they will have expected him to be playing a lot more games. So, um, yeah, Soto is interesting whether they get him back. Sonani has been playing pretty regularly, hasn't he? I did I did a loan wrap a couple of days ago at Pinkton.com to sort of uh, get through who all, all how all the players have been getting on so far and. It is, it is quite mixed. You know, the, 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 you wouldn't say there's lots of standout successes there. McCallum is is probably one one of the players who's been one of the successes and our Ted has played regularly as well. The one that who, who really sort of is a bit odd um, is a name that not many Norwich fans will probably will, will even recognise that much, but Gasana Hadme, who was the top scorer for the under-23s last year. I think he scored seven goals and obviously they had a truncated season, didn't they? He went out on loan with a view to a permanent deal to Real Oviedo's B team and hasn't even played for them. Um, so at the time, I didn't even realise it was the B team that he joined. I just thought he was joining Real Oviedo because I think they're in the second tier in Spain, aren't they? But no, he's playing third tier football, which is vastly regionalised um, and isn't even playing. So, you know, when you have such a big academy set up, there are always going to be players who sort of slip through the net and things like that there's a lot of turnover isn't there and frankly i think it's difficult for fans to keep a keep a handle on all of it because because we struggle don't we and that's our job and <laughs> you've got your list yeah. of sort of 20 odd players there and you're trying to keep a keep a close eye on, on what's going on and it's not always possible <laughs> No, it isn't. And, and it's worth noting with, with these loan players as well, usually Norwich are, are reluctant to call them back unless there's either a necessity in, in the squad or they plan to get them out on loan elsewhere. That's what, essentially what Neil Adams' job is, isn't it, day to day. Um, Sebastian Soto, again, I, I think will be getting recalled, although Daniel Farker hasn't seen him in the flesh. So maybe a, a bit of a period of assessment with, with a view to maybe a, an EFL loan, providing they can get the work permit. And uh, mm. I'm sure there's a club in League One that just had a, a, a Norwich City <laughs> loanee uh, removed from them. So who knows? Maybe we'll see Soto end up at at MK Dons, we shall see, but uh, it's it's certainly one to keep an eye on. Uh, we'll, we'll do. Learn from, um, could learn from Jerome, then, couldn't he? 
Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. It would um, it, it, it would help Russell Martin out as well. So that w- that would certainly seem to tick a lot of boxes. And um, we'll answer a few more questions. And then, as I said, we'll, we'll try to keep this within twenty minutes, or, or it's going to go just over us. But um, nice and and short and snappy. Lisa Jack on Facebook has said fringe players like Josip Dermic and Mo Leitner are on good wages. Could they go on a free? Which is a a very interesting point. Both obviously out of favour. Both not in the country. Um, both probably well, they they would be happy to move this this window. Norwich would would prefer them to move this window, but hasn't been a lot of speculation. Maybe beyond some Josip Dermich quotes uh, a couple of well, it was a week or so ago now, wasn't it? Um, it? It's a strange one with with those two. Do do you see either of them moving this window? I, I'm kind of inclined to think maybe Dermich has a bit more of the of a chance based on the fact he's a striker and teams can get a little bit desperate in January. And of course depending on maybe the Brexit regulations, maybe they'd have settled settled status as well. So that may, might make them a little bit more attractive to championship clubs. But as Lisa points out, the wages are going to be a concern and a struggle for some clubs. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't say much for them if they are happy to just sit and earn their wages again for another six months and, and not play football, does it? I mean, if, if those two guys want to get a move, they'll be able to get a move somewhere, won't they? But they are, you know, in the background, almost becoming Naismith figures, aren't they? They're earning good money for doing nothing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for them to go on a free, it's got to be a mutual agreement, isn't it? They, the, the club and the player have to agree on on a payoff, essentially. Um, you know, I don't know what they're on, but, you know, it's unlikely they're going to be on less than 10 grand a week in the championship, you would have thought, given when Leitner signed and when Dermich signed. Um, of course, the all the all the players had relegation uh, clauses in their contract, but um, yeah, they they need to go. They need to, and, and the fact that Dermich is making so much noise in in the German and Swiss media at the moment, given these interviews, would suggest that he's trying to to generate something, isn't it? And that he you know is sick of the situation and, and and wants to to get it sorted because he is liked him closer when he got his move to Basel. If he wants any chance of playing for Switzerland at the Euros this summer, then he has got to have a very good second half of the season, hasn't he? He's got to be fit and scoring goals. At the moment, he's got absolutely no chance of that. And given his age, it could well be his last opportunity to play at a tournament for, for Switzerland. So you would hope that he's going to do it. Leitner's a strange one, isn't he? You know, um, you judge on his social media account and he's designing his nice house and he's selling quinoa crisps or whatever it is. And he's posting about how much work he's doing on his treadmill every day. But he's not doing interviews and and, and desperately getting his name out there publicly, is he? Um we don't know what his agent's up to, but of course, for them and for the club, it's a situation that needs to have been sorted. We expected Lightning to go last January, didn't we? And then he ended up coming back into things a little bit after lockdown and looked a little bit grumpy and things like that. Um, and, and Dermich, likewise, you know, got that stupid red card against Burnley, and that was kind of the final nail in his coffin with Fark, wasn't it? And they need to uh, they need to get it sorted for for everyone's um, good because it's, it's yeah, it's not do, not benefiting anyone at the moment. No, it certainly isn't. And, and and just finally, the the majority of the bulk of the rest of the questions have been about two positions, largely goalkeeper. Obviously, Norwich, uh, we we expect to sign maybe a, a short term option, pro- probably a free agent, but um, we'll, we'll have to see about that. And then left back as well, which um, appears to be high on on their shopping list this this month. Beyond those two positions, have you any sort of um, inkling or, or any feeling about where else they may need to strengthen? I've kind of said maybe with a long term view, it would be. Good to see them maybe do something with the the number ten position. Although I guess Kieran Dow maybe that that is uh, that's being left for. So it's it's an interesting one. It doesn't feel like there's too many areas they maybe need to add to. It's it's probably just squad depth as maybe these two positions show. Yeah, I, I think the the only thing that changes it is injuries, isn't it? If um, if somebody else picks up a long term injury or something like that, then they have to react potentially, don't they? But given the strong squad they've already got um, and and the players all coming back. Um, I think they're pretty well stocked, to be honest. Um, if they were going to do anything, you know, maybe a Premier League loan or something like that as, as an attacking option, if if it's the right type of player. Um, but when you've got Hugo and Ida both there, unless you're planning on sidelining one of them or, or letting one of them go, then it doesn't really make sense to, to bring someone in as, as competition. Unless Pukki, touch wood, touch all wood that you can. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, gets injured. So, um, no, for, for me, I mean, the, the goalkeeper, as long as Tim Krull's all right, we're, 
we're just expecting someone of decent experience of, of sort of a, a decent age you know like that piece you did which is um looking at the possible free agent options uh, someone like a rob elliott um would seem to make sense wouldn't it if, if he's fit i see middlesbrough signed jordan archer didn't they who was um formerly at millwall so you know it's that, that kind of level isn't it someone who's got good experience good character can come in knowing that they're not going to be the number one because tim Krull's the number one um, but if not, I guess um, you know you go with with Daniel Barden and and um, John McCracken. You could call Archie Mayer back from Kings Inn if you if you really wanted because he has been playing men's football this year and, and, and maybe could sort of swap McCracken out there who hasn't had that senior experience yet and has talked about in in a recent interview that he wants to go out on loan, isn't he? So um, yeah, I, 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 as I say, unless anything really disrupts things, I, I just don't see them being particularly busy. No, well, there, there you go. Um, we'll, we'll just finish with John Davies' question, which is Farker was talking about fourth choice centre back in the summer. Was he not? Um, he was. That I think the reality is, as, as you kind of mapped out there, minus a, a major injury to, to one of the three, it would be very difficult to either sell a Premier League club sending a centre back here on loan, knowing that he's, he's not really going to be exposed to much football. Um, or convincing a player to sign for the club, knowing that he's going to be four, fourth choice and not going to get a lot of football. And obviously, Akin Fomewu is is someone that's been doing well in Ch- uh, Charlton. He's now injured. Um, I, I think they they probably have only thought about bringing him back if if again one of those guys were to get injured. Obviously, Andrew Omabamdile and Alex Tetti are, are a potential cover, aren't they? So uh, they're probably okay at centre back. Would you say? And Sorensen as well. I think you could Sorenson, go. Yeah, given, given we sort of seen him playing as the, on the right of a back three, I think he he be quite comfortable there, wouldn't he? Um, so I, I don't see that as a necessity. And following on from from what I last said, it, it, you know, if Hanley or Gibson were to get an injury or something, then then you could maybe look at bringing someone a bit more front line, um, at, you know, a, a good Premier League centre back on loan or something like that. Um, but I, I think Daniel's going to be reasonably happy with his options. Um, on Delhi, it's interesting that the club have, you know, put him on the cover of uh, of their program Saturday's game. You can we had a snippet of that interview um, on our websites this morning and in the paper. If you haven't read that, um, and and you would have thought that may, maybe from the bench rather than the start, I, I would have thought probably Gibson and Zimmerman are going to start and Hanley will get the rest, and then Omobama Delhi maybe gets the last half an hour in place of Gibson or something something along those lines. But he's only an eighteen year old kid, isn't he? And and he wasn't expected to be involved with things so he would have to really impress to, to, to you know to get more game time this season um uh, but he, fam away that, that that is a shame for him because he was doing really well at charlton wasn't he and, um he's out until probably february and if that hadn't have happened and he'd been going along well they may, may well have just brought him back in but the way things are going if um if norwich hopefully not are in the championship still next year then there's probably a good chance he's going to be in the mix if not, he's probably going to have a good shout of getting a championship loan while Norwich are in the Premier League. So that's as long as he can get back fit again and, and back to the form that he was with Charlton, that, that was progressing nicely. Yeah, and, and highly regarded as uh, by the club as well. So it'll be interesting to uh, to watch his development over the second half of the season. Dave, thank you very much. That wraps up uh, Window Watch, the first edition of, of this January transfer. I know, like I say, well, this will may possibly be weekly. Also, maybe um, if if something happens in in the interim period, uh, we we might spring up and 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 have a little uh, have a little chat about it. Thank you very much for all your questions, all your comments. Thanks for watching. Pinkin dot com, the place to go. Of course, Norwich host Coventry City in the FA Cup on Saturday. We'll be there. Pinkin dot com, the place for that. Stay safe. See you soon.